channel on YouTube. It's much easier to get 5 million views on one video than 50,000 views on 100 videos. He also reveals how he's able to hook in viewers in his videos and what he would do if he started over from scratch. What advice would you give yourself when you were starting out? Your videos suck. You think your videos are good, but they suck. <laughs> you know, they just do. Um, and the sooner you learn how to make good, great videos that people actually want to watch, the sooner you'll get views. Um, I think is the biggest takeaway. Cause like when I was 14, I thought my videos were the best in the world. They weren't, they were terrible. Many people are making way better videos than me, but I didn't think that. And I think, you know, to be successful, you kind of have, a, have to have a little bit of that ego where you're like, you know, my content's great and you got to believe in it. But also like, if you have sub a thousand subscribers, like there's a good probability your videos just suck. They just do. And you need to make hundreds of videos or a hundred videos. I don't know. It depends on the difficulty of your videos. Improve something every time and just like get to the point where they don't. When you make good content, you'll blow up. It's, you, it's not the algorithm. It's not anything. It's just like most me and most people who are in my position, you just make terrible videos. And that's, that's okay because you got to make a bunch of videos and improve over time to be great. Like you don't just pick up a baseball and become an MLB level uh, athlete within a year. You know, it takes many, many, many years and YouTube's kind of the same way. A lot of people get analysis paralysis and they'll just sit there and they'll plan their first video for three months. And yeah, I, I'm any of you listening, if, if you, especially if you have zero videos on your channel, your first video is not going to get views, period. It's not your first 10 are not going to get views. I can very confidently say that. So stop sitting there and thinking for months yeah. and months on end and just get to work and start uploading. Like all you need to do, this, this applies to people who have not uploaded videos, but have dreams of being a YouTuber is make a hundred videos and improve something every time. Do that. And then on your hundred and first video, we'll start talking. Like maybe you can get some views, but you know, your first hundred are going to stop. There are very freak cases like Liza Koshi or Emma Chamberlain who have really good personalities and it doesn't take them so as many videos. And it's just like people who are seven foot five and making the NBA. Like, yes, there are free cases you can find, but for the average person like us, you know, who don't have these exceptional personalities and, you know, backgrounds in filmmaking, just make a hundred videos, improve something each time, and then talk to me on your hundred first video. <laughs> well, not professional in the sense of making money, but professional in the sense of being able to beat anyone in the world. Yes. So, so tell me about like, because I know that you get obsessive about things, right? Yeah. People talk a lot about you were obsessed about baseball when you were like, when was like the Catan phase of your life? Yeah. Well, you know, it's funny. If we did this a year ago, it would have been Catan. Now the new board game is Dune. And what's actually double funny is we also just started talking with the mics on. Um, I'm hosting a Dune tournament where I'm flying all the best players in the world literally two days from now. Is that right? And yeah, it's a $20,000 prize. And it's like the French champion, the, the last three world champions, like the top 10 on the ELA leaderboard. Are you going to compete? Uh, yeah, of course. Nice. So I'm flying them all down and we're like, literally, I'm hosting a tournament two days from now. Um, and it's kind of funny because, yeah, the basically the problem with Catan, though, is there is like a lot of RNG at the end of the day. It is just dice roll. And, you know, a typical dice curve should go up and then down. But sometimes you just have games where it goes up, drops, up, drops. Right. And so I tried to find uh, it's so f funny. People would not expect this to be about board games, but I tried to find <laughs> a board game that was a little less RNG. But then the problem is like chess, it just gets to the point where it's purely skill. And then in my opinion, it's like, who's willing to give up the most of their life? Because like, I feel like I could be a phenomenal chess player if I spent 30 years studying. Right. And I don't want to spend 30 years. So that's where I came to the conclusion. It has to be a little bit of RNG, but preferably it's not super RNG. And so like I landed on this game Dune, which is kind of a good combo where, it, yeah, and it's super nerdy, but that's why I'm really into it. And I feel like if you're good, you can still consistently win. Uh, but there is a little bit of an element where, you know, it mixes things up. One thing that was, I just don't even understand it, that was wild, was when we were going to Antarctica. And also, I hate that. So far, this podcast has be, been me complaining. I love you guys. <laughs> you guys gave me everything. Like, so I'm yeah. very grateful. I, I love my fans. So don't take this yeah. the wrong way. This is just more an interesting thing that I've been thinking about a lot recently. Yeah. Not me saying you guys suck. Because this is also like 0.0001% of people. 99% of people I meet, super chill. Just ask for a photo and it's cool. And so, yeah. So did this happen? Was this like early in your life that you got this like strategy game addiction? The obsession? Yeah. Um, I don't know where it's come from. I actually just listened to Elon's biography by Walter Isaacson. Have yeah. you listened to it yet? Uh, not yet. Yeah, it's really good. And Elon was the same way. He just throughout his whole life has always loved strategy games. And I don't know, for me, it's like, it's almost like a fast paced version of what I'm doing. Like building a company is fun, but it's very slow. Like this right. is like, you know, we're on year 14 and I'm going to be doing this for another 30 years. Whereas like in a strategy video game or a strategy board game, you get that like adrenaline high, but in the span of an hour, not right, a decade. Right, right. And it's fun, you know? Yeah. Uh, How do you improve something each time? The second one, just 
I don't know, put more effort into the script. The third one, try to learn a new editing trick. The fourth one, try to figure out a way that you can have better inflections in your voice. The fifth one, try to, you know, study a new thumbnail tip and implement it. The sixth one, try to figure out a new title. There's infinite ways. That's the beauty of content creation online. There's literally infinite ways from the coloring to the frame rate, to the editing, to the filming, to the production, to the jokes, to the pacing, to every little thing can be improved and they can never not be improved. There's no, there's literally no such thing as a perfect video. What YouTube wants is they want people to click on a video and they want to watch it. Like, at its core, that's what it is. Now, you can like draw little lines and go as deep as you want into how to get people to click and how to get people to watch. I mean, essentially, by studying the algorithm, you'll learn that you're more studying human psychology, right? What do humans want to watch? You, anytime you say the word algorithm, just replace it with audience and it works perfectly. Like the algorithm didn't like that video. No, the audience didn't like that video. Literally, that's it. If people are clicking and watching, then it gets promoted more. And that's literally all the algorithm does is reflect what the people want to a T. And if you deny that, you just make terrible videos and are trying to find a scapegoat. What, what makes for a good title? Short? Not just short. It's also, if someone reads it, are they like, do they have to watch it? Is it just so intrinsically interesting that it's just gonna f with them yeah. if they don't click on it? You know what I mean? Ideally, it's a title also that, you know, because the titles don't live in a vacuum, right? So it has to lead into the content. So ideally, the title represents content that you would want to watch for 20 minutes. So if it's a 20 minute video and the title is I stepped on a bug, the click through rate is going to be much lower than if it was like a five second video. Like even nuances of the length of the video based against the title will affect whether people want to click it because sometimes they just don't add up. I mean, it's that. Yes, ideally you want it below 50 characters because above 50 characters on certain devices, you run the chance of it going dot, dot, dot. So like I took a, a light pole and I saw how many dollar bills I could stack on top and they would just go dot, 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 because it's yeah. too long and it can't finish it. And that's the worst thing because then people don't even know what they're clicking on. And so it's going to do even worse. Short, simple, ideally, and just so freaking interesting. They have to click and it is a good segue into the content and it represents the length of the content. The more extreme the opinion, typically the higher the click through rate. If you can like pay it off in the content, then it just supercharges it. So like- Oh, so you have a kind of estimate of the extreme. Yeah, like, uh, this, this water, right? You're like, Fiji water sucks. Yeah. That would do fine. But if you said Fiji water is the worst water I've ever drank in my life, yeah. way more extreme opinion would do way better. But you have to deliver. Yeah, but then you have to deliver because the more extreme you are, the more extreme you have to be in the video. I heard you guys talking about um, autoplay on YouTube yes. and I've never considered it. We get like 10 to 20 million views in the first month and just Spanish on our videos. So we have a massive Spanish audience. And so like none of these people speak English. So I'm like really struggling too mm -hmm. because I'm like, Hey guys, I'm a little uncomfortable. There's a lot of people around me, but they don't, they don't yeah. have any idea what I'm yeah, saying. Right. And they're just like, you know, photo, photo. And right. so, yeah, anyways, you get experiences like that yeah. where you're like, you seriously question, like, is this actually worth it? Like, cause mm. obviously it just makes traveling and everything infinitely more stressful. And yeah. yeah. And it's, it's interesting because when you're sitting here, like we were with you in an edit session last night, like you're yeah. crafting the videos to get as big as possible. Yeah. So it's almost like both things are happening at once, right? Yeah. Like the bigger the videos get, which you just literally, the yacht video was what? The, the second the sec most viewed YouTube video, non-music yeah. and uh, YouTube history in 24 hours. So mm -hmm. the most viewed yeah. video in 24 hours is when uh, Will Smith slapped Chris Rock. I think that got 48 point like 2 million views in yeah. a 24 hour period. Before that, it was our Squid Game video, but now our Squid Game video is number two. Then we just uploaded a video that beat Squid Games, right. but barely lost by like 500K views to uh, the Chris Rock video. What are the different strategies for high retention for your videos and in general? It's like, how, how do you cook good food? You know what I mean? It, that's like the same kind of question. I see. So there's so many different ways that you... So it, it boils down to... I mean, uh, do you think at the, at the level of a story or do you think like literally watching five seconds at a time, am I going to tune out here? Am I going to tune out here? Am I going to tune yeah. out here? It's all of it. You need the overarching narrative and then you also need the micro where every second, you know, needs to be entertaining. And you, you basically, what's interesting is the longer people watch something, the more likely they are to keep watching. So you don't have to try as hard in the hypothetically back half of a video as you do in the front. Like even right now, we're so deep into this where a lot of people listening are probably just going to keep listening relatively close to the end, unless we just have a really boring part of this conversation because they're just they're just in it, they're yeah. they're immersed. Um, and so, a big like to really boil it down to a simple level, you just want to get people where they're immersed in the content, and then just kind of 
Hold them there. What do you think gets us to a million subscribers? Well, subscribers is an arbitrary number. Okay, that, so a million, that million views of video. No, you should yeah. ask me what helps us make the best videos possible. Okay. That's the only question you, you should ask me. Subscribers don't matter. Views don't matter. I mean, they do, yeah. but all that comes. Everything you f***ing want as a creator <laughs> comes from making the best videos possible. And thumbnails. Uh, yeah. <laughs> but it's easier to, you know, make thumbnails. The video part's the hard part, and that's yeah. the thing that you're known for. Ask, how can I make my videos better? Do that every single day for years. And then you'll probably get views.